Okay, today you guys were gonna read a story called A Plump and Perky Turkey. I thought it was perfect for Thanksgiving. This turkey looks pretty happy, huh? So good readers, when they read a story, they ask questions. They ask questions before they start reading. They ask questions during their reading. And they even ask questions when they're done reading. The reason we ask questions well, there's a lot of reasons we ask questions. One reason is to make connections, right? To make connections to the world, connections to ourselves from the story. Another reason we ask questions is to make sure we're understanding what we're reading. Another reason we ask questions is to make predictions about what might happen next. And finally, the last reason we might ask questions in a story is to figure out words that we don't know. Sometimes the pictures and asking questions about the picture can help us figure out unknown words. So let's look at this first page right here. I'm gonna show you asking questions. All right, I'm gonna ask a couple of questions. I haven't read the story yet, so I don't know anything that's going on. So these are questions before the reading. Well, my first question is, Oh, why do all these people look so sad? Hmm, I wonder what's going on. My second question is, I see a lot of people looking at the newspaper. I wonder what the headline says. The headline is like the title, the important part of the news. Let's see, if I zoom way in, it says Squawk Valley Press, or Squawk Valley Press. Turkey's gone. Uh-oh. Well, that answers one of my questions. I might know now why they're so sad. Their turkeys are gone. I'm going to read the story now. And while I'm reading, I want you to think of questions to ask while I'm reading. When I'm done reading, we're going to talk about some of those questions. Okay, so while I'm reading, you're asking yourself questions in your head to know more. Okay, here we go. This is called A Plump and Perky Turkey by Teresa Bateman and illustrated by Jeff Shelley. The people in Squawk Valley were downhearted and depressed. Thanksgiving was approaching, but without its special guest, they couldn't find a turkey for the feast they planned to eat. It looked like they'd be making do with bowls of shredded wheat. Hmm, I have a question already. Why are the turkeys gone? Where did they go? Hmm. A plump and perky turkeys, what we need, they all agreed. But finding turkeys nowadays is very hard indeed. The birds have gotten smarter, and they all seem quite aware that it's best to disappear when autumn leaves are in the air. A plump and perky turkey's stomach, oh, sorry, a plump and perky turkey. Stomachs rumbled at the thoughts, but how to trick a turkey into jumping in the pot? I see some turkeys. They're in this hot air balloons. Looks like they're flying away. Hmm, I wonder why they're all flying away. Why don't they want to be there? That's my question. Then, Ebenezer um, Beezer had a thought pop in his head. If we can't find a turkey, let's have one find us instead. We could hold an arts and crafts fair, he declared with a wink and a grin. A fair with one grand turkey prize that all of us could win. And since our goal is turkey, that's the theme we'll take to heart. We'll fill our fair with folks and fun and tons of turkey arts. We'll make turkey out of spuds, spuds are potatoes, and out of clay and out of rope. We'll make turkeys out of oatmeal out of paper, out of soap. We'll hang a bunch of posters in the forest way down low. 
to invite some turkey candidates to model for our show. Why, even turkeys understand, as everybody knows, you can't make turkey art without a turkey there to pose. The people in Squawk Valley held a poster jamboree. They plastered their creations onto every single tree. Pause the video for a second and answer this question. Why are they asking turkeys to come? Why does it say model wanted with the turkeys? What do those posters mean? What do they want the turkey to do? All right. Now, <clears throat> it happened in Squawk Valley, lived a turkey known as Pete. <coughs> Excuse me. He was cocky, he was clever, he really liked to eat. When he strutted through the forest, plump and perky through the pines, he was startled and intrigued by all those interesting signs. With a proud and haunty gobble, he gave out a hearty cry. A plump and perky turkey? Well, I'm sure I qualify. What does it mean to be plump and perky? Pause the video, think about those words, plump and perky. What does that mean? Plump means big, right? If you're, if you're plump, it's big. And perky would mean like happy, kind of. So they want a big, happy turkey. And why do they want that turkey again? They want the turkey to be the model, right? They want a turkey to sit there or stand there while all of the artists are creating him out of soap and out of rope and out of paper, out of oatmeal, out of all these different silly things. They're going to create sculptures of turkeys, but they need a model to see a turkey so that they can create their art. Pete applied for the position and he strutted plump and proud. He could hardly wait to model for the large and eager crowd. You're hired, shouted Beezer, for the folks had all agreed that Pete the perky turkey was the answer to their need. Twas the week before Thanksgiving when Pete posed to do his art and the artsy craftsy townsfolk started making turkey art. There's all the people with their clay and their paint and their paper and their rope and they're all going to create a turkey. They made turkeys out of spuds and out of clay and out of rope. They made turkey out of oatmeal, out of paper, out of soap. Thanksgiving Day, the artwork done, they asked the model down to judge their homemade turkeys and to pick the best in town. Now when the judging's over, Beezer whispered with a smile, we'll tuck that turkey model, or we'll tuck that model turkey in the oven for a while. So did they really want a model for their turkey? Or did they really want that turkey so that he could be a model for artwork? That's not really the reason they wanted the turkey. Pause the video to tell me why did they actually want that turkey? Let's keep reading. Pete judged each piece of artwork as the hungry crowd all cheered. He stopped to take a closer look and then he disappeared. So the turkey's gonna be the judge of the artwork, but then he disappeared. <gasps> Do you have any questions about that? Hmm. There were turkeys made of spuds. There were turkeys made of rope. There were turkeys made of paper. There were turkeys made of soap. The room was full of turkeys in a wall-to-wall -wall collage. For a clever bird like Pete's, it was a perfect camouflage. Do you see where he went? Mm-hmm.
He's over here, old Beezer said. He's here, said Jacob Green. They searched amongst the turkeys, but their bird had fled the scene. A note in turkey scrawl they found half hidden on the lawn. Goodbye, I took my modeling fee. The oatmeal bird was gone. So the turkey was gone and he said he took his modeling fee. That means like the money he was owed for modeling. So instead of money, he took the oatmeal bird. The people in Squawk Valley were left ra feeling rather blue. The only turkeys left in town appeared too hard to chew. Oh well, said Beezer brightly as they gathered round to eat. Right now, at least I'm thankful that we still have shredded wheat. So did they get to eat their turkey? No. What are they eating instead? <laughs> They're eating shredded wheat, which is actually a type of cereal. That day, folks learned a lesson that stuck firm with them forever. A plump and perky turkey can be pretty doggone clever. And that's the end. I hope you liked our story. Go ahead and hop on over to our live lesson. Thanks for listening.